Hi, this is Blake Graham, Triple Diamond with Young Jevity, and I'm here today with Brenda Wright, who is the co-host of the Ancient Legacy Essential Oils Conference Call, a weekly conference call, and is actually the traveling oils expert for Young Jevity. How are you today, Brenda? I'm doing great, Blake. How are you? Great, thank you. Now, Brenda, when we hear essential oils, I know the first time I heard it, I didn't really understand what we're talking about for essential oils because it's very different from the essential fatty acids. Explain to us briefly, what are essential oils? Essential oils are the product of your medicinal herbs that have been distilled or taken down to an oil form, and they are used as a medicine if you need to have a medicine so that the healing ability of them is more what they are instead of the essential fatty acids, which is your omegas and things. It's, so it's more external than it is internal. Am I safe in assuming that when we talk about herbs and the essential oils, that the essential oils are kind of like the compound or the active element that makes herbs work? Yes. So they're a lot yes. more concentrated. Than, yes, a lot more concentrated. Right. Yeah. So if someone was taking an herbal product versus an essential oil product, essential oil products is, will tend to be stronger and work faster. Yes. Essential oils will absorb into the body in 14 seconds or less. Everything else has to go through the digestive tract which slows it down, and so they can work quickly. But an essential oil goes directly to the point and gets the work done. Now, how is it that Longevity acquired the ancient legacy essential oils? It was one of the companies that merged in, one of the first companies that merged in when Longevity started opening up to merging with other companies. And so it was brought in by one of the leading aromatherapists in, in the United States, and uh, formulas came with her. And so that's how we brought it in, is it was one of the first mergers that Longevity had. What makes the essential oils with Ancient Legacy different from what you see in other essential oil companies? It's an amazing thing because essential oils, usually everybody says, okay, lavender is lavender. But there is a different quality of where it's from, the growing season and everything. And the same as with longevity certification of their minerals, Ancient Legacy certifies all of their essential oils. And so they are certified by the Aromatherapy Board in Europe. Now, what is that certification? That's an EOBBD, which is Essential Oils Botanically and Biochemically Defined. It, they are tested and they are certified and graded, you know, of, of for their purity levels. And with Ancient Legacy was a license or an agreement with the Aromatherapy World to bring in the purest medicinal grade of the essential oils. And then after we have ours, then other companies can come in and get basically what's left in different qualities and different levels. And we, when you get down to the bottom of the essential oil ladder, then you've got the oils that are sold to perfume companies. And that's, you know, so you're talking the bottom level there. Okay. So the essential oils that are used for aromatherapy with Ancient Legacy are actually the kind of the cream of the crop? They are the very top. We get first pick. Now, when we talk about different essential oils having different qualities based on where they're grown, you know, obviously there's difference in climate, mm -hmm. differences in temperature, difference in the minerals in the soil mm -hmm. that I know a lot of people are familiar with. Does that make that big of a difference in the essential oils? It really does. It's amazing. It's just the same as with, you know, with the minerals that we're looking for. You've got to have the purity and certain trees and certain bushes and whatever like certain soils. You cannot take a frankincense tree and plant it someplace else and expect it to grow and flourish. It knows where it was supposed to grow and that produces the best tree, therefore the best oils. God knew where to put that tree, and therefore that oil. So lavender grown in Utah or Idaho, Idaho wouldn't be the same as lavender no, grown in France because of the climate. Because a drier climate gets a drier um, lavender. Our lavender is what is a very unique lavender. Lavender Milet is a cloned lavender, so that it has the same properties all of the time. And so you're not dependent on as much of the seeds that they transport, and sometimes the seeds will weaken and you get a weaker strain of lavender. So by cloning them and you know, onto the plants, you get a consistent, high-quality, high-grade lavender. Okay. Now, when we talk about essential oils, to put this in perspective for health, we're not talking necessarily about the 90 essential nutrients, right? Correct. So this is something that people use in addition to taking the 90 essential nutrients. Yes. 
And uh, I know there are several essential oils, as you have traveled throughout the country and talked with people on the conference calls, that you recommend that everybody in longevity try. And these are the things that uh, some of the oils, especially if they're looking to compare our oils versus another company's oils, there's certain ones that they can compare very readily and see the difference in quality. What would those be? The first one is the lavender. People that have used lavender can, can smell the difference because our lavender has a much more warm, inviting scent to it. It is pleasant to the, to the smell all of the time. Sometimes lavender can be a caustic, and people will actually have their eyes water if it's the wrong grade or a lower grade of lavender. But you can smell the lavender and tell the difference. So and what is it that lavender does? Lavender is the Divine Mother. She instantly starts regenerating tissue. She's a major healer. That's why it's best for burns because it stops the burning and starts regenerating healthy tissue in seconds. So lavender is, is one of your basic oils to have all the time. People that get curling iron burns or children that grab a hot pot or a curling iron, that's a deep burn and you want to stop it immediately. And ice, everyone grabs the ice. If you'd put the lavender on first and then the ice, you would not only stop the burning, the ice would stop the swelling, you would also have no scarring because the regenerated tissue is immediate. Now, is the lavender then one of those oils that they can put directly on the skin? Yes. Or I think that's called putting it on neat. Neat. is is uh, With nothing else with it, no carrier. Drop it on neat. And you only need just a couple of drops. It will spread. Even if you have a larger area, dropping it around the corners and one in the center will spread around the area very lightly because you don't want to rub a burn. You don't want to take off skin. So it is applied neat. You can mist it on, which will cover a larger area. But dropping it on neat is your best way to go. However, two drops will do everything you need to do. Four drops does absolutely no more than two drops. So you know you don't need a lot for it to do everything it needs to do. Now, is this for more than just burns? Does it work for other first aid if somebody gets a cut or a scrape? Or Yes, it does. Lavender is also a very soothing oil. So if you've got people that are very high energy, uh, not um, able to settle down. High stress. High stress. Oh, well, nobody has ever has stress. <laughs> no. no, not us. But if you have high stress, just even smelling the lavender, it has a very calming, soothing effect. Rubbing it on the bottom of your feet, one drop on each foot, rub it all anywhere. It doesn't matter where you rub it. It will get into the bloodstream and calm you down. A fussy child, the lavender is very good for the children. And so putting it on them or having it even in the room is very calming, very soothing. That's why the nickname for lavender is Divine Mother. It just is absolutely the ultimate hug. Now, when you talk about having it in the room, what do you mean? We, I hear a lot about essential oil dispensers. Is that what you're talking about? A diffuser is a way to get the oils into the room. A good thing is, is it does put it out into the room. You don't want to diffuse any oils for longer than 15 minutes every two hours because you don't need a lot of it in the room and it stays in the room. But it does put that scent and that protection in the room. And at my home, I have my diffuser so that it blows towards the air intake for my furnace. So my whole furnace system and my air conditioning system work as a, as a further diffuser, if you will, to diffuse that oil clear through the whole house. Okay. Now I know that I have seen you use for a diffuser kind of uh, a low-tech diffuser that's something that actually uses some of the other ancient legacy products using the sea salts uh the dead sea salts from the dead sea literally and they are an amazing thing because that is another source of minerals and we buy from one of the highest quality sources there in in uh, jerusalem and it is totally accepting to the oils and all you need is to just take like a half a teaspoon a tablespoon whatever just put it just use your hand as your cup and put some bath salts in there, and it's the unscented bath salts, and drop six, seven drops of oil onto it, and then take it into the bathroom and run it under the war warm water as it comes out, and that will hold the oil in the water and also fill the entire house with the scent of that. But it will also, re oh, lavender bath is the most amazing, relaxing thing ever. Mm. And you can use that and put that in just a jar. Right. Yeah, oh, I see you take the bath salts <laughs> and put them in a jar and then put a few drops of the oil in there. And mm -hmm. that becomes a diffuser that you don't need electricity or anything exactly. for. Exactly. And you can put them in the oil burners as well. But you've got to make sure that the bath salt is there between the oil and the, the hot flame. Because burnt oil is burnt oil. Mm. And it stinks. Mm. So you, the bath salt acts as a carrier then 
and a barrier between the heat source and the, and the essential oil. But putting it in a jar with a lid, you can use it over and over and over and just shake it around to refresh or add another couple of drops. And it works and it fills the entire room. If you've got somebody who's snoring, bath salts with marjoram, all, then you can actually sleep in the same room. Okay, great. Well, we've started to talk about lavender. What are some of the other oils that if someone was going to compare them with other brands that really stand out with the ancient legacy line? The first one that really comes to mind is the tea tree. And we recommend the tea tree for everybody to have. And not just one, but to have several. Tea tree is a medicine chest in a bottle. One of the components in tea tree is called terpenol 4. And we have a very high standard for ours. It has to be a minimum of 36% and up. Most companies stop at 36. That's their high end. What's the average? About 14 so we're talking nearly three times the average. Three times the average. And that makes it pure enough to be able to put it in your mouth. Otherwise, it doesn't do anything. Mm. So because of that high quality of the terpenol 4, it makes it a purer oil. The healing capability of it is, is much higher and much faster. And it will actually absolutely stand in and substitute for any of the other oils until you can get to the other oils. It is the most adaptive of all the oils. The British military, that's part of their kit, is the tea tree oil. But ours has to have the high quality, and it is certified that it is a high quality, so it is safe to put in your mouth. So when we talk about the tea tree being a medicine kit in a bottle, mm -hmm. what are some of the uses of that tea tree that, when they're trying to do first aid? We do recommend, like, for a sore throat. You put one drop on your little finger, always your little finger, so you don't stick it in your eye and lick it off and then kind of swish it around in your mouth and swallow it. And you can do that like once every five minutes for up to six applications. And But usually by the third or fourth application, the sore throat is gone. Mm. It is an acquired taste. This is where the enjoyment is like, okay, do I want the sore throat or do I want to taste this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it so, is a strong taste. It is a, yeah. But the second time anybody has a sore throat, they relish the fact that they, they're going to have it gone within about 15 to 20 minutes. Hmm. So they can do that. Um, it is very soothing as well. It, it is not lavender, but it has a soothing effect of laver, lavender if it needs to. And it can be dropped on meat. It can be put in a mister. It can be diffused, although it's one because it is a little bit more toxic to the eyes. It's not one that I recommend that they diffuse. But definitely, if you've got a rash on your skin, you want tea tree. Tea tree loves infection. It's just like the Pac-Man of all oils. It just loves to munch, munch, munch. And so, so if someone has an infection or inflammation, they'd want to use tea tree. They'd want to use tea tree. And rub it on directly, drop directly it on, on the skin or drop uh -huh. it on meat. If you've got a rash, you want to mist. You don't okay. want to spread that rash. And you don't. And if you've got a rash, you don't want to irritate it. So always mist. Um, acne. Now, when you say well. when you say mist, what are you, you doing get, with the oils? You can get a little mister bottle, a one ounce, two ounce, or four ounce. Two ounce is the most common, and you fill it with distilled water, or you know bottled water. You know, you want clean water with it, or you can use the plant dried minerals. This works amazing with it. They just seem to be best buddies. And so, in a two ounce mister, you would put about twelve drops of tea tree. Okay. And and then you just. You know, fill it up with your plant-derived minerals or half plant-derived minerals, half water, and 12 drops of your tea tree oil, and just mist it on. You don't want a sprayer. You don't want a heavy spray. You want a mist. And close your eyes. Every time you mist, you close your eyes so that the oil does not get in your eyes, because it is airborne when you spray it. And make sure your children and pets also have eyes covered or diverted. I tell children all the time, okay, close your eyes. The angels are going to come kiss your face, and when they're done, you can open them. And then I, they close their eyes, I spray the mister around them, and they feel it. They just raise their faces, and they just feel that mist coming down. And when it's all done, they open their eyes. So the tea tree, if somebody has a rash, we're going to use a mist. Now, you mentioned acne. Mm -hmm. Do you use a mist for acne, or are you going to put that directly on neat? If you've got one that's really strong, you know, when you've got the white, the white head already formed on it, I would put it on neat. And in that case, I would either use a cotton ball or a Q-tip or my pinky finger and put a drop on there and then just touch each area. But again, you know, knowing that the antiviral, antibacterial portion of the tea tree is going to make it so you can touch each area without doing another drop. If you've got a wide area, I would use the skin enhancer and put my tea tree in that. 
So the skin enhancer can be one of those carriers that you can mix different oils mm-hmm. in and mix it on. Okay. It's, very, it's a very good one, and I, it loves the oils. The other one is a good one is grapeseed or the jojoba. Now, jojoba oil is the oil that is more natural to the oils of the skin. Okay. But it is more expensive, but it is another good one to, to use as a carrier. But um, I've had a lot of people with the, using the plant-derived min- minerals in the mister with a tea tree, and as it starts clearing up, then you add in about four drops of lavender, and that starts the regenerating of the healthy, normal tissue of the face. So we're going to use lavender after we use the tea tree. Yes, you want to attack the concern and get that breaking it up and clearing it up. The tea tree will heal it, but you want to speed it up with the assistance of the lavender. So what about for burns and cuts and scrapes? Can Would you use those two oils together? If it's not infected, if it's just a fresh wound, I would just drop a drop of lavender on it. Okay. Or I would go to a blend. If it's infected, I would use the tea tree neat. And then when it starts healing up, then I would add the lavender. And you can layer, which means you would drop a drop of tea tree and count to 20, you know, give it a second or two to work, and then drop a drop of the lavender. And by doing it, waiting in between, they're layered, and they will both work. So tea tree is something, when you when we call it a medicine cabinet in a bottle, that we're not necessarily using every day, but we have it on hand for yes. those kind of first aid type issues or mm-hmm. if somebody gets a sore throat. Yeah. But there are other oils that really stand out with a company that we use on a pretty regular basis, even if you're healthy. Yes. And there are some of those that really are unique with this company when you compare them with other companies. Mm-hmm. What would some of those other ones that are that stand out in the Ancient Legacy line be? The first one is peppermint, and our peppermint is such a high quality that it's about four to five times stronger than any other peppermint we've ever seen or heard of. It is so powerful and so pure, one drop will do you, literally. It will also work in clearing out, the, clearing the throat, put one drop in eight ounces of water and sip it. It'll clear up coughing, clear up indigestion. Mm-hmm. Um, it can be done internally because of the purity, again. I've heard Dr. Wallach mention putting one or two drops in some warm water and sipping on it if somebody has mm-hmm. acid reflux. Yes. Be- well, peppermint, Pepto-Bismol, peppermint. Oh. But ours is the highest quality peppermint. So, so that's where Pepto-Bismol comes from, is peppermint. Yes, it is a peppermint really? oil. Yeah, and okay. bismuth. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah, it's really a, it's an amazing one, and it's very strong. It's also good if you've got a sinus infection. You can put the one drop on your finger, lick it off, swish it around, and then close your mouth and breathe in through your nose. And it will water your eyes and clear them and clear your sinus and your ears and everything else connected with everything Mm -hmm. in your mouth. And it's very good. It's also good if you're needing to stay awake. Mm. Um, If you're doing a lot of driving and traveling, put a drop of peppermint on your finger, you know, swish it around, close your mouth and breathe in. It does wake you up, wake up the senses. It's not going to last as long as some of your energy drinks, you know, the eight hours, but it will wake you up enough to get you somewhere where you can, you know, hopefully take a rest or something. But it does keep you alert. Okay. Now, peppermint, I've also heard you talk about uh, putting a drop on your temples if you have a headache. Yes. You start on the back of your neck. You can use either peppermint or lavender or layer them, but I would start with the peppermint. And so you do it at the back of your neck at the hairline. And then on the temples at the hairline, because if you got peppermint in your eyes, it would burn severely. Should you mix that with the skin enhancer first? I would do it neat or with the CM cream. Okay. Either of those, because you're wanting to reduce the pain. Mm-hmm. And so you do the back of the neck, the t- both temples, and the forehead at the, at the hairline again. And that'll keep the oil from running down your forehead. So you're going to be touching four places, back of neck, temples, both sides, and the forehead. Okay, so for headaches, you recommend using the CM cream as the carrier? Yes, or you can do the peppermint oil neat. And one drop, believe it or not, on your your middle finger or pinky finger and rubbing it around will go to all four places. Well, I know we use the CM cream a lot for people with achy joints and sore muscles. Um, Is there an oil that would go really well with the CM cream in that? Yes, it's called trauma. And trauma is just exactly what it stands for. It is a blend and it has peppermint in it. It has helichrysum, which is the master healer. It has lavender. It has a lot of really good healing oils, but you add that trauma to the CM cream and you've got everybody being your best friend in seconds. I've even seen it work on gout. A gentleman had, he he was in so much pain. A young man 
couldn't even move around. He wore his cowboy boots, and then he almost had to sleep with them because taking them off was so painful. But he wore them to support his foot so that he could go and do his cement work. But when um, we were there, he took it off, and I said, okay, I've got some CM cream and some trauma oil. Let me put it on. And his foot was the size of his calf. It was horrible. And so um, I put on some CM cream and dropped a drop, one drop of trauma oil, and he says, I'm a big guy, so I let him have two. You know, sometimes you have to baby them a little bit. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So he puts it, and so he's rubbing it, so he knows how much pressure he can put. And he starts rubbing it around his foot, and I would say there's only about a fourth of a teaspoon of the CM cream. With two drops of With two, two drops of the trauma oil. And as he's rubbing it around, I start counting. You know, one, two, really slow. And I only got up to five, and he stands up and starts bouncing on that foot. And I says, it's gone already? And he says, well, there's still a little bit of pain there. He says, but look at this. This I'm moving it. And he starts flexing his toes that he had not flexed in months. And so it starts taking the swelling down immediately, but the pain went away. And that was the big thing. He did not let me out of his house without selling him my open bottle of trauma oil and CM cream. And that's, that's on every order that he has because he runs a cement company. Everybody in his company uses CM cream and trauma oil. Fantastic. Now, in those situations, you, we still recommend that they're getting the nutrition on the inside. Of right? course. Okay. Yes. Yeah, because the oils work extremely well in total harmony with the nutrition. So trauma, is it just for joint pain or does it do more? It does a lot more. It's if you've got somebody hits you, you know, you've, you've fallen down, you've got a bruise, you, you know, you've run into something, put it on immediately, you will have no bruising no scarring. I mean, I've had a lot of surgery I had to have done. And as soon as I got out in the car, first thing I did was CM cream with a drop of trauma oil. And I had absolutely no bruising and my healing time was cut by about three fourths. Now that is one that also we use neat or do you use it with a carrier? Both. Okay. Either way. So if, if you've got an open wound, you want to drop it in neat. But we don't use that one internally at all? No, absolutely not. And the lavender we don't use internally? It can be. But you've got to know what you're doing. It can be put on the inside of your lower gums. But anything that you want to do internally, you want to put it in a capsule, with the exception of the peppermint and the tea tree. Those okay. are going to be recommend neat inside the mouth. The others you put in a capsule. Okay. Well, another one I know that we actually see a lot of people consuming is the lemon oil. Ah, but it's in a carrier called water. Okay. So you've got a carrier with it. And lemon is an amazing cleanser. All your, your cleansers in the, you know, that you buy in the grocery store and everything, there's a lemon scent to it. And that's because lemon is such an amazing cleanser. By putting a drop of it in your water, you've got it antiviral, antibacterial, anti-germicidal, and it's going to help clean the liver. It's part of the liver cleansing formula. And so you're cleaning all of this and protecting yourself. And even if they have ice in the water, you've actually got it so that it's clean. When you first put it on, you'll notice it kind of floating in the water and you'll look and it looks a little dirty. It's actually cleaning the water at that point. So just stir it in. And then even when they refresh the, the water, that oil is all along the outside of the glass. And so the benefit of that for them is when they go to do the dishes at, in a restaurant, say, and you've had lemon oil in there, they're going to have a very healthy batch of dishes for a little while but it does it cleans everything out and no matter where you are or what country you're in you've purified the water enough that your system can handle it and it tastes great oh it does it's very refreshing now that's one of the oils that i think stands out in the ancient legacy line when you compare that to other lemon oils mm -hmm. it does and again it's the purity of it and the way it's distilled where is the best lemon oil grown the best is from hawaii and so most of the lemon oil that you see on the market, is it from Hawaii or do they get it from lots of it's other places? It's from all over the place. The lemon trees grow, you know, even here. But you're going to get a different quality and you're going to get a more sour. Great. Now, since we're speaking of lemon, I know lemon is one of those that's a great oil for purifying the air. Like if you have, you're worried about airborne bacteria mm -hmm. or yeah, viruses. It's a, it's a good one to miss, but again, make sure the eyes are closed because it, it is a citrus oil. Mm -hmm. And it's also phototoxic, which means that if it's if you spray it on your skin and go directly out into the sun, you will burn. Mm. It is phototoxic. Any of your uh, citrus oils are that way, and so it'll burn. But cl it'll clean the air. And I have a mister that is quite often by my front door, and especially in the wintertime. 
And as people come in and I know that they're coming, or I'll, I'll take a few seconds before opening the door and mist that lemon oil so that they, when they come in, they'll have to walk past it or through it, so to speak. So they're not bringing in whatever they've got outside. By my back door where the kids are in the mud and stuff, they go through a, a lemon bath. So. Is this one that could be a good oil to diffuse, like if somebody's sick? Yes, but do it across the room from them. Okay. So that's not directly on them. Because sick people rub their eyes. And the lemon oil is kind of, again, a little caustic. And if it's getting too close, it'll kind of sting their eyes if it's in there, in the air. So if they're sick, I would do some of the other oils before I would do lemon. But I would put lemon in anything that I'm washing. If I'm washing the room down, I would put in my wash water, put it in the soap first so that it'll disperse throughout the water. And you can also, and it has been done, put drops of lemon in somebody's belly button if they're sick. And I know people think that's really crazy, but if you drop a drop of lemon, lavender, but lemon is really good, if, especially if they've got MRSA or any of your infectious bacteria, okay. you drop a drop of lemon oil in their belly button and their body will take that and fight off the infection. Really? Yes. Dr. Judy was able to do that with her son who was in a severe accident and that's all she could get to from all the bandages was his belly button. Now, you mentioned Dr. Judy Wright. She is the other co-host with you on the Ancient Legacy Conference Calls. She is, calls, yes. Right, and she's a naturopathic doctor as well as an aromatherapy expert. Yes. Yeah, she's a practicing naturopathic doctor, and she uses the oils extensively in her, in her practice. Now, since we're speaking about cleansing, mm -hmm. you have another favorite product here that's one of the top ten from yes. the company that you recommend that everybody get for a variety of uses, and that's the Deep Cleanser. The deep cleanser is another blend, and it is a deep cleanser exactly like it says. The best thing about deep cleanser is it loves mold. It absolutely fights mold, and it also is really great in the protection, so that it cleans and protects at the same time. But you're wanting to do it as you're proactive with your oils. You're wanting to putting it in your laundry, and to do that so that you don't get an oil stain on your clothes, you're going to put it in your hydro wash or your hydro clean, so you're going to put it in that so that in that's the laundry soap. in the laundry soap so that is the carrier and all you need to do is just take the bottle and give it three shakes you'll end up with nine to twelve drops and that's sufficient for an entire load of laundry even my husband's work clothes that's sufficient to do the entire load and that's impressive because i know your husband doyle is a mechanic yes. right and he works with a lot of not essential oils, but uh, oh, petroleum oils. Caustic <laughs> oils. And yeah. some of them have a definite odor. And so I can clean his whole load with the deep cleanser. And he always has clean uniforms. And they don't carry that odor through the house. And, and everyone says he smells nice anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> That's always good. Yes. Now, deep cleanser is not just for the wash, though. You, yeah. I know you use this one extensively when you travel. It's my favorite. And that's the one that's in the Mr. Bottle that's in the, my suitcase. 12 and the, drops in 2 ounces. 12 drops in 2 ounces. With either distilled water or the plant minerals or a combination. On this, I use, the, I use the, just the distilled water because I'm cleaning the room. I'm cleaning where I'm going. So what I do with my deep cleanser, so as soon as I get to my hotel room, I start misting that room. I start with the floor because my shoes have got to come off. I pull my bed apart and mist around it. I don't have bed bugs where I'm sleeping because I've used that deep cleanser around the mattress, around the pillows, around the headboard, around it, and the floor. And then I go into the bathroom and mist the inside of the shower curtains. Every place I'm going to be, the towels, they all get a misting, not saturation, but a misting of deep cleanser. Then my environment is protecting me. Right. So it works to help fight bed bugs? It works very well to help fight bed bugs. Wow. And I've recently read that uh, we're getting more and more of our clothing imported from overseas. And oftentimes that clothing, even brand new clothing, mm -hmm. can carry bed bugs. Yes. And so if somebody's well. washing their new clothes, putting in that deep cleanser could be a great thing. Yes. Even if you just mist them as they come in, you know, or put them in the dryer and take a, uh, a washcloth and put a couple of drops of deep cleanser or orange, the sweet orange, on the washcloth and just run them through the dryer. The heat of the dryer plus the essential oil is going to kill off even the eggs. So in the dryer, we'd use the deep cleanser or the sweet oil on a washcloth. Yeah, the orange. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm sorry. The uh, right, the sweet orange essential oil, mm -hmm. right? 
it's not just putting an orange in there. No, <laughs> you can try it, but it might be a little bit messy. Yeah, and we do that on a washcloth because the oils are so strong that we want to make sure that they're not eating away at any of the fabric from our clothes. Is exactly, that right? exactly. Sweet orange has the benefit also of taking away the static. Okay. In clothing, so it works very very well. In fact, in my laundry, I use my deep cleanser in my la- in the wash, and in the laundry instead of the dryer sheet, which is toxic. I have a washcloth that gets about three, four drops of orange oil on it, and that goes through the dryer. And the washcloth eventually gets eaten away because orange is very strong. It'll take tar, road tar, off of a car without taking off the paint. Wow. So that's how, and it's a very good cleansing oil as well. You've probably seen that with Doyle and oh, his work. a few times, <laughs> yes. And so it'll take it off, but it doesn't hurt it. But it also, and it, the, the orange scent is another one like the lemon that's very clean smelling. And so it's not bothersome. Is that another one you can drop in your water? You can, but it, our orange is a lot stronger than a lot of others. Grapefruit is another one you can drop in the water. But if I'm going to do orange, I'm going to do it like an orange tea. Okay. And I would put that in honey as a carrier and do it more as a tea than I would. But it, I would personally do lemon before I would do the orange. So in the water we have lemon, then grapefruit, Mm -hmm. um, possibly orange in a tea, Mm -hmm. and a peppermint tea. Yes, peppermint tea is very, very soothing. You can do a lavender peppermint tea. A lavender together. Yeah, lavender and peppermint tea would be good, and lavender tea is soothing. But your carrier is a little like a teaspoon or less of honey or something like that, or you can put it on a tea bag. If you have a a tea that you like, you can put a, a drop on the tea bag. And that will add the benefit of the essential oil, but it disperses it through all of the water. Okay. Now, since we were talking about laundry, um, in addition to the deep cleanser, there's another essential oil that we often use in the laundry, and that is the eucalyptus globulus. Yes. there We have three eucalyptus in our line. The eucalyptus globulus is, again, another cleanser. If you're talking about the frequency of oils, it is one of the lowest frequency oils. What does that mean, frequency? Frequency is the energy that it has, energy ratings. You know, everything, the whole world runs on a frequency. You have a low frequency sounds, high frequency sounds. The oils are the same way. And eucalyptus globulus is one of the lower ones, but by no means least ineffective. So when we talk about a lower frequency Mm -hmm. oil versus a higher frequency oil, what's the difference there? Just in the amount of energy that it expels. Okay. Rose oil, Rose Damascena, is the highest, one of the highest, and it has over 350 plus frequency. Um, nothing bothers Queen Rose. But Eucalyptus globulus is about 70 to 75. Does that kind of equate to it being a little softer? Yes. Although Eucalyptus globulus is not safe for children. That's why we have Eucalyptus radiata, which is safer for children, a different frequency. Now, let's talk about uh, a couple of terms that we've used here. You talk about toxic, Mm -hmm. and I know a lot of people, when they hear the word toxic, they think harmful, Mm -hmm. right? And I think it might help to define that for some of the people listening to this. When you talk about an oil being toxic, that means... That means that it is not for internal use, or unless it has a carrier, it could be harmful to the liver or even the kidneys or something like that. So it's something that the body would have to detox if you took it internally. That's what you're talking about. And that's why some of those that you say um, are some of the stronger oils are not recommended for kids because they have to be purified out through the liver and the kidneys. Right, and it's too strong for their system to handle. Okay, it's not saying that using the oils as they were directed to be used is harmful. That's not what we're saying. Yeah, that's not. totally not what we're saying. Okay. Now, when we talk about uh, oils for kids, I know in the Ancient Legacy line, there's actually a number of oils or blends mm-hmm. that they specially designed for children. They are some of my favorite. I mean, I'm just like a big kid at heart. They're, they're my favorite. I love them. One of the best is the To Be Well. This is an amazing oil that can go on a newborn and or, you know, up into an old born, if you want to put it that way. But <laughs> you can use it on all of them, but uh, To Be Well is the one that actually helps build their immune system. I mean, to be well, helps them to be well. And you don't want to wait until they've got the cold to try and help them be well. This is a preventative that you can use if you put a drop on every night or every morning and rub it on their feet, on the bottom of their feet. The skin on the bottom of the feet is the best and safest place to put oils at all times because the skin is different and it's more receptive to it. 
and all of your nerve endings are there anyway. Right, and that uh, then is transmitted to other parts of the body. I've heard uh, about people actually doing a test where they've rubbed the oils on the bottom of their feet and they can taste it in their mouth. Yes. In a few seconds. You know? Yes. We, I think we got to four seconds and we use cinnamon oil. Our cinnamon oil is another one that is very, very, very potent. And it's one of the three spices. It will fight diseases and infections. And uh, we rubbed one drop on a gentleman's foot, counted to four, and we were both tasting it, the person that rubbed it and the person that had the foot rubbed. So, yeah, very strong. So what would somebody use cinnamon oil for? The cinnamon oil is one of the three spices. You have cinnamon, the clove bud, and the thyme thymol. These three together will fight some of the deepest, most wicked infections that a body can have, including parasites. Um, we, there was a gentleman that we used those three oils on that had a disease that was literally eating his skin away. I mean, he had, oh, ugly, ugly sores all over his body and even on the bottom of his feet, but his wife was able to rub it on his feet, one drop of each, and within three months, the skin had pretty much cleared up because he also took them in a capsule with the olive oil and they, they are just the absolute, the most... Healing isn't the word necessary as they are the infection fighters. They are the powerful, powerful ones. Are they more of an infection fighter than tea tree? Yes. They are what is called a hot oil. Okay. And you so want to start with the least offensive to the body, which is your tea tree. Or the gentler ones. Or the gentler ones, okay. yes. And so those, are the, those three spices are some of the hottest oils. Well, let's go back then to the to be well. You said that is one that you can rub on a, child, uh, on a child's feet. Um, as a preventative measure, mm -hmm. every day? Every day. My grandson knows that he's not going to go to sleep until that, or to be at peace, which puts him to sleep, is on his feet. But if he isn't feeling well during the day, and he'll do that fake little cough, <laughs> and run and get the bottle of to be well, and come and lay on the floor and stick his feet up there. He knows that when he has that on, he feels better. <laughs> Sounds like he wants a foot massage, too. Uh, pretty much, I think so, too. Yeah, they like that, too. But you might as well prevent them, you know. I mean, they may get still sick still, just like when they take the nutrition. They still have a chance of getting sick, but not as, as severe and not as long. And not as often. Yes, definitely not as often. The adult version of that is called first defense. You can miss the tube well if they don't want to rub it. Mist it around them. You know, anything to get that in there. So the tube well is a gentler version and the first defense is a stronger version. By far. Right, and I've seen people use the first defense for a lot of different things. Are we talking mostly colds and flus and viruses or are there other things that they use the first defense for? That's the main thing. It is your first defense. And, you know, when we were talking about frequency, the flu, even the H1N1 and whatever they've got this year, um, has a frequency of about 17 to 19. Okay, the weakest of the oils is eucalyptus globulus at a frequency of 75. 75 is going to win over 19. The to be well, even combined, has a frequency of over 200. Mm. The first defense is closer to like the 275, 280 because you've combined several high frequency oils. And so you've got a good protection there. You don't need to get the flu and you don't need to get personal opinion. The vi you know, the vaccine, you've got first defense. Hmm. So miss that on. Now, I know when we talk about oils and fighting bacteria and viruses, right, there's a lot of talk about these antibacterial soaps that have one antibacterial chemical in it. But when you actually look at the chemical structure in the essential oils, there's lots, like literally hundreds mm -hmm. of different antibacterial, antiviral chemicals. And so you don't worry about antibiotic resistant bacteria mm -hmm. with yeah. the oils. Yeah. And it's safer, stronger, and much more effective. Yes. All through history, you will find that the oil vendors, even with all of the plagues that are all through history, the oil vendors are the ones who did not have any problem with this. They are the ones who were not sick, and everyone who had the good fortune to have their tents in the market around the oil vendors also did not get sick with, it, with the plague. And the first bandit, if you will, uh -huh. were the thieves that, you know, because when they bury people before, they would bury them with their riches. Well, they learned very quickly that these oil vendors were the ones that were not sick, and so they went and bought oils, put it inside the cloth, put the cloth around their nose, went into the tombs and robbed the tombs, and did not get sick from the plague. Thus, your first masked bandit was a preventative measure from not catching the plague when they robbed the tombs. Mm. So it's very, very effective. 
Now, some of the other oils that we hear a lot about, um, ginger is one. Mm -hmm. Ginger is your anti-nausea, if you if you will, your anti-motion. So it's not just motion sickness from traveling in the car. It's even the morning sickness, which is a motion sickness. You know, we know that essential fatty acids help with this a lot, but the ginger oil, even just smelling it, I've had people put it on the back of their of their hand and rub their other hand on top of it, or on their wrist, or just in a cotton ball, and all they have to do is smell it. A person with morning sickness, if they will have it in the zippy bag on a cotton ball, right there by the bed, and the first thing they do is open that up and just take a couple of deep breaths and then close it up again, they'll be fine. Is that another one that works in a tea? Yes, ginger tea. Oh, that is so sweet. Uh -huh. And putting that on a tea bag works very well. Um, at Christmas time, you can even use the cinnamon with the ginger, with um, you know some of your other things, you know, for your apple cider and stuff. One drop of each, and it's a very, very good drink. Great. Now you mentioned snoring there, and I know that some people suffer from snoring, and it's not always the snore. Exactly. <laughs> yes, it could be somebody that's sharing the room with them or something like that. Marjoram is an amazing oil in that it relaxes large muscles. So the way to remember, you know, large muscle marjoram, MM. But when people are snoring, it's a muscle. So again, with the bath salts, the unscented bath salts and in a jar, you put about a half a cup of the bath salts and about 20 drops of the marjoram. Put the lid on, shake it around. And then at night, just before bed, about 20 minutes to 30 minutes, take the lid off and put it by the side of the bed of the person who snores. For just 20 or 30 minutes? 20 to 30 minutes. You don't want to leave it there all night? No. Mm -hmm. So just 20 to 30 minutes, and you have to be the admitted snorer. Some <laughs> people just will never admit. So just having it in the room, and then put the lid back on, and everyone will get a good night's sleep. Great. Great. Now, since we're talking about relaxing... I know another thing that's very common is people have breathing problems, mm -hmm. you know, whether you're congested or something else. And there's a special oil blend that we have to help with breathing. Breath of life, even with asthma. And this one with EFAs is amazing how well they work together. Um, I have a son who had asthma, and once we started the nutrition, that helped. But every once in a while, he cleans houses, and he has to have something additional from all the dust. And he has a mister of the breath of life. The oil blend in here, there, is very good at opening up the airways and opening up the sinuses and taking away a, that kind of a dizzy feeling and give you some strength to be able to get to where you need to for, you know, like your EFAs or something like that. But the breath of life opens it up all the way down to through the lungs and everything, but without expanding it or without... So how do you use the breath of life? You mentioned a mister. Do you mist yourself? Mm -hmm. Like on your face or your chest? or Yes, just on your, yeah, mostly misting it on your face and breathing it in. You can also rub it directly on your chest and on your lungs if you want to, but misting it and then rubbing it in or just spraying yourself down. He just he will just spray it around his face and breathe it in. Now, I've uh, actually seen and m myself have personally done it where I've used like the CM cream as the carrier mm -hmm. with the breath of life or kind of like a vapor rub on the mm -hmm. neck and the chest. If you Works somebody... very, very well, yes. Mm -hmm. And the lung area. Don't forget that your lungs also go around your back. So open it up. The other one for, for children, breath of life is not that great for children, but it, it's okay. But the one that you would do with, for children is called Ravensara or Ravensara. It's pronounced both ways. And that's kind of like a softer, gentler breath of life. Yes. And it is even safe for brand newborn babies to open up the lungs and just rub a drop on the dad's thumb or the mom's thumb who's ever able to be with the baby. Rub their thumbs together and then rub the baby's feet. So that kind of disperses it a little bit. But it can also then be rubbed on the chest and on the lungs to totally open them up. Let's talk for just a minute now about safety of the oils. Because I know that uh, safety can be a big issue when you're dealing with some of these oils that are stronger. Yes. The first thing, of course, is always keep your eyes closed. You know, if you're missing when I, I put oils in the, in the skin enhancer and put it on my face... Don't get near your eyes. Don't get near the corner of your eye. You know, we have some that help with wrinkles. That's fine. Don't get near the corner of your eye so that you have oils getting in your eye. It will burn. Oil and water do not mix. Another one is internally. Unless we really specifically tell you or suggest it to you or you've been to a workshop where you know which ones are safe, don't put it internally. 
unless you've got it in a capsule with olive oil. So typically for internal use, it needs to be those that we've specifically talked about using internally or that they've specifically learned about using internally. Yes. They shouldn't just be mixing them and saying you can take it all internally. Correct. There are a lot of other companies who did not do safety for a long time. And a lot of people that I know personally and a lot of others that I have heard about have been hurt permanently by the misuse of oils and the incorrect oils being put in. One example of that to be careful in how you use it would be the oregano. You talked about hot oils. Is that one of those that's a real that hot oil? That is the absolute hottest. If it's pure, and ours is a pure oregano, it burns. It flat out burns, but it also fights fungus. As a toe fungus or a skin fungus, this is an amazing oil. Do you use a carrier with it, or does it go on neat if it's, you have the fungus? It's, if you have a toe fungus, it goes on neat. But again, be careful rubbing it around. Have it only on the fungus part. Okay. And then, but you would start with tea tree. If that doesn't kick it, go up to the oregano lavender. Okay. We have it mixed with a lavender so that as soon as it burns, it heals. Okay. That's the safety issue that is built into our oregano. A lot of people have come in and said, you don't have oregano. Well, yes, we do. But it's the highest quality and it burns so hot that it has to have the lavender with it immediately. Prepackaged. Yeah, exactly. Other things for safety, I know we recommend a lot, is the education of the oils. Mm -hmm. And there's a few tools that have been put together to help people learn more about the oils. What are some of those tools that you personally use and would recommend somebody that's interested in learning more about the oils use? The first thing that I use is the still room book. It's called Recipes from the Still Room. And it has recipes, literally, blends, and those are safe. They've been tried and they're true. And so they have a lot of recipes for kids, for home, and a lot of things I've mentioned are in that. And then it goes through every oil that we have in the line and says the properties of it, the uses of it, and the safety issues and the safety precautions. And when I teach an oil workshop, we go through every one of those oils, and I teach from that book so that you can then keep your notes in it and have it and refer to it as a very easy guide. So if somebody is going to get into the oils, you would recommend that they get that book as well as listen to the conference calls and attend some of the workshops whenever mm -hmm. they can. Yes. And the other book that I like is the one that Dr. Wallach put out called, and Dr. Milan with Dr. Judy and Alexandria Brighton was called The uh, Passport to Aromatherapy because in there they were able to put a concern like, you know, lice and then put list the oils or heartburn and list the oils that they would use. They don't tell how to use the oils. But that's where the steel room book comes in, is the how-to book. So if you're looking at the specific health concern or a specific use, you'd maybe go to the Passport to Aromatherapy first, mm -hmm. and then go to your steel room book on how to use the oil. Yes. And if somebody asks me really strange things that I'm not really sure of, I will go to the Passport book. And lo and behold, they're, they're in there just as strangely as the people ask for them. Yes, they're in the Passport book. So Dr. Wallach knows about strange questions. So Okay. Now, we've talked about, so far, carriers that we've used, and you've mentioned the grapeseed blending oil, the jojoba blending oil, and those are both products that are mm -hmm. in the yes. Ancient Legacy line, mm -hmm. Is in addition to the Envision line of skin products, and that's the CM Cream and the Envision Skin Enhancer. Yes, and those are the two, and then the bath salts, we have those. Right. So these two, the grapeseed which also helps with allergies, by the way, and then jojoba, which is more natural to the skin, these are the safest of the blending oils. And then, of course, the skin enhancer and the CM cream are already proven to work. Okay. Well, what are some of the other oils? I know we don't have time to go over all of them, but what are some of the other oils that, if somebody is going to start with the basics, they'll probably start with the first few that we talked about. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked about probably the top 10 so far. What are some of the other oils for people that are looking for maybe something specifically? Um, bergamot, I know you've talked about before. Bergamot is, you know, people are in this high-stressed world. There's a lot of depression going along. And right now with the recession, everybody's depressed. Bergamot is like nature's Prozac. And so putting it on, you know, on your tea bag or whatever, or even with lemon, it's an extremely good antidepressant oil. Is that one that you use internally, like in a tea? In a tea. How about using that in a diffuser? Does that help? It's a little bit caustic to the eyes, but um, it does help. But rubbing it on the bottom of your feet is more effective. Okay. You want to get it internally as quickly as possible and calm down. 
Mixing it with lavender has also been beneficial because then you've got that Divine Mother, that warm hug with the antidepressive oil. And so it makes a very good, it's a very good way to calm down and de-stress yourself. Okay. How about cedarwood? Cedarwood is, people just think, oh, well, you know, moth repellent. Well, it's also an ant repellent. But it also restores hair. It stimulates hair growth. How does it do that? It's just the properties of the oil as you rub it into your hair and then wait a few minutes and then shampoo it or put it directly in the shampoo and let the shampoo sit on your head. So you can rub it in neat or you can put a few drops in the shampoo yeah. or conditioner? Nope. You want it in the shampoo. In the shampoo. Because you, you know, because of the, the shampoo is made, made more to, to strip your hair and goes down and takes the dirt off and you want it at that level. Okay. But it also stimulates the hair growth. So is that best used after you use a shampoo if you're going to use it neat? If you're going to use it neat, put it on before you shampoo. Let it sit on your hair. Just put a couple of drops in your, in your hand and rub your hands together and rub it through your hair on your scalp. And then, you know, and then get your bath started and stuff and then shampoo your hair. Okay. And you can do that. But it also is an amazing, amazing oil for opening the lungs and helping with breathing. People don't realize this, that it is a great breathing oil. That's why it's in the breath of life. Oh, really? Yes. It's also that, and it's, a lot of oils have a character that is put with it, and the character of, of cedarwood is called strength. I mean, it's a tree. So, yes, it is a moss repellent. It's cedarwood, but it works really, really well for breathing. Well, if somebody's worried about uh, keeping some of those creepy, crawly <laughs> things, uh, spiders, uh, insects, ants, ants you mm -hmm. know, out of their homes, how would they use the cedarwood? You're going to do it neat, mostly. You're going to find out where they're coming in and drop one drop. Like if they're coming in through a window ledge or something, drop one drop there and they won't cross that line. Especially the ants. You can spray it. You can entertain people for a long time, like grandchildren and grandpas. You give them a mister with cedarwood oil in it, about 12 to 14 drops, maybe 15. Have them go out to the ant pile and practice and they can spray a drop on their finger and circle the ants. The ants on the inside will not go out. The ants on the outside will not go in. They will not cross that barrier. Really? Peppermint also works, but it's more expensive. So use the cedar wood, and it's more fun for them to do it. You don't want them spraying the peppermint. But that does entertain people for about an hour. But, you know, if you can see where the line of traffic is, so to speak, put a drop there. They will not cross it. Or put a drop on your finger and draw a line. They will not cross the line. Hmm. Interesting. What are some of the other oils? You've mentioned uh, eucalyptus globulus mm -hmm. for adding to the laundry soap, right? Mm -hmm. But there are other eucalyptus ones. What would we use those for? Eucalyptus globulus is your cleanser, and, and good for that. Eucalyptus radiata, it's ER. If you've got somebody who's like in the desert and they're hiking, you need an ER, eucalyptus radiata. Have a jar of water with about 12, 15 drops of eucalyptus radiata and a cloth, or have it ready, a cloth ready, you know, a bandana that you've done. If you're getting heat stroke, sunstroke or something, Soak the cloth, wring it out, and then put it around your neck, and then wipe your forehead. It will cool you down very quickly. So is that good for fevers as well? Yes, but again, watch. This is the safety issue with eucalyptus radiata. It will cool somebody very, very quickly. So you don't want to go from a high fever to freezing in the 14 seconds. So you're going to put it in your bath salts and put it in the water and soak them for just a few minutes. And it will lower soak their the feet? Yeah, soak, or their whole body. If they're you know, a child with 104 temperature, oh, you're you gonna... want to cool them down, but you've got to leave them in just a short amount of time. And it will reduce the fever, or just even, again, the washcloth on their forehead or on the back of their neck. Okay. Eucalyptus well, citriodora, that's your lemon eucalyptus, which is your bug repellent, ah. your mosquito repellent. So we use the cedar wood to keep out the ants, and mm -hmm. if you want to keep out uh, the flying flies, well, does the, that work for it's flies? It's the mosquitoes. Geranium. Mosquitoes. Geranium works for your flies. You've seen the window ledges in France and everything with all the geraniums? Right. They have no screens on their windows and no flies in their house. Flies do not like geranium. So you can mix the citri citriodora, eucalyptus citriodora, and the rose geranium together in a mister, and mist that around things on your screen, on you, and you don't have mosquitoes or flies. I see. So those two mix together very well, very well together. in a mister, mm -hmm. and you just mist around there? Yeah. How often, if you're trying to keep things out, how oh, often would you mist? I do about every six hours. 
Or okay. if I notice somebody coming in, then I really missed around the screen again. Okay, so if somebody is going outside and they want to use the oils as a bug repellent, is that something they can do or they just kind of miss their clothes? Yes, and the, around the top of their head. You can also put the Citriodora in the grapeseed in a mister. It will spray. It comes out a little thicker and then you can spread it around like a, a bug repellent. What are some of the other oils that you really like? A lot of people that do a lot of exercise and running and everything, they need to have birch. Birch is for the long bones. It is another tree oil. But rubbing that neat or rubbing that with CM cream if they've done some running or anything that will spread it, you know, the grapeseed, anything to spread it around the, from the knees to the ankles or from the hip to the thigh, you know, for the, for the legs. Strengthen the bones, but also take the stress and relieve the stress from the bones. Okay, so Isn't while they're taking the Mighty 90 inside and the extra calcium or the glucogel, mm -hmm. that's something they can use topically with the CM cream. Yes, and that, you know, and it, it's in the trauma, but you sometimes you need it just neat. You need it just straight all by itself without the other things because you don't have pain, but you just need to strengthen it. Or even if you do have a leg cramp, birch will take it away very quickly. Now, if somebody's trying to rebuild bones, can birch be something that they could add to yes. maybe give them a little extra assistance? Yes, it will. It's, it's for the long bones. Okay. Another one that I really like is to be at peace. And that just pretty much says it all. Now, you um, use this for children quite a bit. Well, And yeah. uh, some of the bigger some children. Some of us that don't go to sleep at night <laughs> because our mind won't be quiet. And, all, and, you know, and I like lavender, but sometimes I like to be at peace. Now, a caution with to be at peace is it has a blue oil in it called tansy, which is blue, and it will stain white things. So there's several ways to use it. You can put it on the bottom of the feet and rub it in, you know, 10, 15 minutes before bed, and that'll put a child to sleep and a grown adult as well. Um, or you can put it on the cotton ball and put it in the pillowcase. But again, you don't want a white pillowcase because you'll have a blue spot. Hmm. You can also put a drop on the collar of the pajamas. If it's a white pajamas, they're going to have a blue spot, you know, but they know that they're going to go to sleep. So you just put one drop on and just kind of touch it around, and that will put anybody to sleep. And if you're traveling and you have trouble sleeping because you've traveled so much and you're on the road a lot, to be at peace in the CM cream or, you know, any of those things, I love to do that. You know, if you run through an airport, CM cream to take down the swelling, to be at peace to put you to sleep. And you don't sleep for long hours. I mean, you just get a good, restful sleep. Now, when we talk about mixing this with like the CM cream or the skin enhancer, would you mix it with the entire jar? Absolutely not. You're not going to use it all. And the oil will break down the integrity of the cream. So you're going to want to take on, you know, again, I, my favorite mixing bowl is my palm, is my hand, and I just cup my hand and put in like a teaspoon or less because the cream spreads so far. And then I just put one or two drops of the oil there and just kind of squish my hand together and rub it on. Okay. So, yeah, the other ones, there's one other one that I like that I haven't used a lot, but when I needed it, I needed it, and that's called the GI Purify. This is another blend. This is one that I think people have done on their belly button. Again. Well, the belly button, but it's also the whole abdomen. Okay. This is the one that for if you've got upset stomach, you've got gastrointestinal concerns, and you can't wait for the enzymes or something to get it gone, and the peppermint is just you know not touching it, you want the GI Purify. It's stronger than the peppermint? It has a blend of okay. different soothing oils in it. And you can take it and rub it on your stomach. You want it, so put two or three drops in your hand. If you're right-handed, use your right hand. If you're left-handed, left hand. But you put it in the palm of your hand and literally just rub it clockwise. Go the same way the blood flow is. Clockwise, starting at the center chest and go clockwise around on your stomach and your abdomen and coming around just two or three rubs and count to ten and you're fine. But when a person's got an upset stomach, and even a baby, now with a baby you're, or a fussy child, your colicky child, you're going to want to use a carrier because of some of the stronger oils in there. But, you know, they're laying down. You can put a, the carrier and put some of the GI Purify, but just rubbing that on their abdomen, and that will, it gets rid of that fussy, colicky, you know, upset stomach, acid reflux, anything like that. That's really good, especially when you're traveling and you don't know what you've eaten. The enzymes are going to help. But they take a little time to work. Right. The GI Purify is within 14 seconds or less. Fantastic. Now, one of the things to end with 
and unless there's some other oils you wanted to mention. Oh, I love them all. I mean, that that's a two-day course. Yeah, well, that, and that's what I wanted to end with, actually, is the course. Um, when people want to find out more information, uh, and you they go to your classes that you hold, it's actually a lot more information than we were able to cover in this recording. Oh, yes. And they actually get to kind of get hands-on experience, or maybe with the oils, feet-on experience might be a, <laughs> a better word for it. But where they could actually experience the oils and come mm-hmm. up with their own blends and mm-hmm. have their own oils and misters that they can take out, mm-hmm. take out of there. Right? They do. They leave with at least seven different things that they have made with the essential oils, and one of them is a blend. And they have to make the blend for them. And people get so worried about a blend. But as we talk about the oils, we talk about the emotions of them. And if you state a purpose, you know, if you're wanting to de-stress, and you state your purpose, the oils that want to be in your blend just absolutely become very obvious to you and how many drops. And so people make their own blend, and they make misters, three different sizes. So they have that. They get to use the skin enhancer. They get to use a cream. They have bath salts there. They can use these things and take it home. And I have called and checked on a few people to make sure that they have used them, not put them on the shelf and said, oh, look how pretty. Or, gee, this smells nice, but I forgot what I was going to use it for. They have to have it written down. And so they leave with that. But we do go over all of the oils and why that oil has a benefit and all the safety precautions. And so we go through all of it. But yeah. and That's a two-day course mm-hmm. if you're going to cover everything. Everything. Yeah, and you do sometimes with, you'll have shorter courses and then sometimes even advanced courses. Because there's no way you can absorb everything in the first class. I didn't. It took me several years to get it all. And I still am researching and learning different things. Well, hopefully that's yeah. a, a purpose that, or a function of this recording that people can listen to it over <laughs> and over again Yeah, and uh, pick up things maybe the second or third time going you, through. You do. You, you pick up new things every time. And the workshops, we have a lot of fun. I've tried to be serious. I've really tried to be serious. <laughs> it has not worked yet. Uh-huh. And we do the hands-on. And yeah. so foot rubs are a favorite thing that we do. So if there's somebody listening to this that wants to put a seminar together, the best advice is for them to contact their upline or the company and so they can get a hold of you yes. to try to schedule an event out there. Yes. Okay? Yeah. Well, Brenda, we want to thank you for your time and thank you for all you do to help share these wonderful oils with the Ancient Legacy line with people throughout America. You're so welcome. It's my passion. It's my favorite thing to do. Thank you.